Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Stanley, a coach and scout for the NBA franchise Sixers. He has been in this business for 30 years, but the Sixers haven't been at their best in the last season. They are low on the list, and he wants to locate a fresh prospect to improve the team's performance. He's looked everywhere for the best player the team requires, but to no avail. His efforts are never up to par. He meets a talented player, but he's an addict. He also encounters a tall player, who lies about his age and is too old. Someone else meets his qualifications as well, but while playing, he breaks his leg and gets injured. He gives up, and returns to the United States without signing anything. During a meeting in his office, Stanley gets into a disagreement with the team's owner, a young man named Vince. They each have distinct viewpoints, about the young person they are about to hire. To save his job, he sets his ego aside, and lets Vince win the argument. Instead, the team's owner, Vince's father, Rex, sides with Stanley. He is aware of his son's egoistic and untrustworthy attitude. After work, Rex invites Stanley to the team's practice court, and questions him about why he backed down in the argument with his kid. He wonders, since in his mind, Stanley is a strong-willed man, who would stick to his ideals no matter what. Rex tells him to be the new coach assistant when they arrive at the basketball court. He is overjoyed to hear this. His ambition of becoming a coach has finally come true. Before leaving, Rex advises never to back down from the truth. Stanley tells his wife and children the good news at home. Teresa, his wife is overjoyed, and prepares a lavish dinner for the family to celebrate. He plans to have a romantic night with his wife in the evening, after taking his daughter to a school event. While driving to their home and listening to music on the radio, terrible news interrupts the song. Rex, a basketball hero, who is also the owner of the Sixers, has died. Stanley encounters several basketball players and significant others in the funeral parlor. He approaches Rex's daughter to express his sympathy. He remains enthusiastic about the team's future, since he believes she would succeed his father as owner, but she informs him that she will remain as manager, and that the team's owner will be Vince, her brother. Stanley is astonished to hear this, he is concerned that having Vince as his boss will make his job much more difficult, as the two have never had a good relationship. Three months later, since Vince was appointed chairman, while coaching the team, Stanley is summoned to Vince's office without reason. Vince demotes Stanley back to his prior scout division job. Stanley disagrees with the decision, he can't bear the thought of spending the next 30 years apart from his family. He even skipped nine of his daughter's birthdays. Vince asserts arrogantly that it is not a request, but an order. He is fed up with their fight, and tells Stanley that if he can discover even one young talent, he will relinquish his job as the coach's assistant. Stanley is aware that he cannot fight back, so he accepts the rules, and backs off. The next day, he returns to the scouting division, and boards a flight to Spain, in search of a young prodigy on his list. When he arrives, however, his efforts are futile, because the young prodigy has been hurt, and is unable to play. He is dissatisfied, and decides to spend the night in Spain, watching a street basketball game. He is surprised by the performance of a man named Cruz, and decides to follow him to his residence. Cruz is angry at first, and believes Stanley is gay, but after this is clarified, he allows Stanley to enter his home, and introduces him to his mother and daughter. Cruz's life is troubled, he divorced his wife, and was forced to live with his mother and daughter when his father abandoned them, for another woman. He is the family breadwinner, and must play street basketball to win bets, and provide for his family. Stanley informs him of his intention to bring Cruz with him, to join the Sixers, but Cruz declines the invitation, because he has a cleaning job the next day. Stanley says that the minimum wage for a professional basketball player is $900,000 per year. Cruz's mother tells her son to take sick leave, and travel to America with him. Cruz flies for the first time, especially in business class. He is so pleased with the service, that he walks over to Stanley's seat to inform him that the flight attendant had provided him with so many excellent delicacies. As they arrive at the airport, Stanley is perplexed as to why a cop escorted Cruz to the interrogation room. He is finally liberated after a long wait, thanks to Stanley's legal friend. He is discovered to have a criminal record through the interrogation. He once assaulted someone, and was arrested. His deception disappoints Stanley. Stanley informs him that everyone has a dark background, that no one wants to talk about, but criminal records are different once they are recorded, since they cannot be removed for the rest of your life. The following day, Stanley invites him to warm up on the Sixers court. The other players are wagering on who can make the highest jump. Cruz seizes his opportunity, and leaps significantly higher than any other professional player, despite the fact that he is not wearing suitable basketball shoes. The other players are taken aback. 
Unfortunately, when Stanley reveals how talented Cruz is, Vince rejects him again, without offering a good reason. He aims to make Stanley's job more difficult, simply because of a personal situation between them, and he appears to want him to retire. During the night, Stanley tells Teresa about his problem, since the team rejected Cruz, he plans to support himself. Teresa is skeptical of the proposal, but she refuses to back down, and continues to support her husband. The next day, he discreetly registers Cruz as a first-round NBA basketball draft pick. Vince is also present, registering his young talent, Kermit. He notices Stanley's actions, and chastises him for acting without his authorization, telling him arrogantly that Cruz would fail, and would be defeated by Kermit. After warming up, Stanley instructs Cruz to provide his best performance to the other team's basketball seniors and the judges. Cruz, on the other hand, does not make it. Stanley is disappointed in him, Cruz started well, but then became upset, and lost focus on the game. Vince and his players appear and provoke Stanley. Vince advises him to go find another player, who can outperform Cruz. He is unable to stand Vince's attitude, and confronts him, quitting his job. Vince and the rest of the Sixers laugh at his resignation, and walk away. Cruz is pictured slumped inside the court, distraught by his performance that evening. Stanley approaches Cruz, and informs him that he has been obliged to play basketball, in order to provide for his family's necessities, but that this is no longer sufficient. He asks Cruz if he likes basketball, if not, he can leave for Spain at any time, and no one will stop him, but even if he likes basketball, it won't be enough. He also needs obsession. He argues that the only thing that can outperform a gift is a passion, which Cruz desperately needs. Cruz's heart is fired by his remarks. Since entry into the Sixers was difficult, he plans to train Cruz on his own, to develop him into a top player, who every NBA team wants to sign. He pushes Cruz to his limits. After a few days, he no longer motivates Cruz, and realizes that if he wants to be the best, he must drive himself and work for it. He has been training hard for weeks, and hopes to get drafted by the Sixers. Stanley invites Cruz to supper with his family one evening. Later, his Sixers friend calls to inform that Cruz is no longer eligible for NBA player selection. According to reports, Vince revealed Cruz's criminal past to the public, during a talk show, and he also stated that he had fired Stanley from Sixers management. Cruz leaves after accidentally seeing the chat show. Stanley then pursues him, and apologizes, but Cruz is furious no matter how hard he tries. All of his efforts over the last two weeks have been fruitless, and he is now barred from playing for any NBA team. After dropping Cruz off at the hotel, Stanley returns home, and overcome with remorse, attempts to contact all of his family and co-workers to assist him, in getting Cruz's name on an NBA roster. Unfortunately, no one could assist him. His daughter has an idea, while eating breakfast in the morning. She once went viral with a video of a basketball game highlight. Since no one in team management wants to hire him, she advises introducing him through social media. She is confident that if Cruz's video goes viral, any team would sign him without hesitation. Stanley invites one of his buddies, a former NBA player, to introduce Cruz to a street basketball group, and settles on a $1,000 wager to beat Cruz. The game begins, and Stanley's plan works. Cruz's videos go viral, and numerous TV stations show it. Since he has so many supporters, everyone forces NBA management to allow him to participate in the NBA player qualification procedure. Cruz is ultimately allowed to compete in the national qualification competition. But something doesn't seem right, despite finally being able to attend the qualifier, he appears depressed all day. The following day, Stanley surprises him by inviting his mother and daughter to visit him in America. Seeing that brightens his day, and removes the gloom from his face. The big day approaches, and Cruz finally gets to see Kermit and Vince again. Cruz outperforms Kermit in the physical assessment, which impresses the judges and the rest of the team scouts. The following day is the final evaluation, when the players must provide their best performance. Cruz performs admirably at first, until his daughter shouts in favor of her father. Kermit, seeing this, seizes the chance to provoke and taunt him. He pushes Kermit away after hearing him speak negatively about his daughter. Since then, numerous TV stations have published negative reports against him. As a result, Stanley considers quitting. He drives Cruz to the airport the next morning for his trip home. Cruz feels bad for failing Stanley, and thanks him for everything he's done for him. Cruz, like Stanley, appears hesitant to let him go. When Stanley is about to leave the airport, one of his Sixers teammates calls him. He claims to have surreptitiously listed Cruz on one of the closed prerequisites for NBA players, and believes that many notable team scouts would be there to look for hidden talents to recruit. 
Stanley rushes to catch Cruz, before he flies. Later, because the selection session is only an hour away, they race to the arena, to get ready for the game. Cruz notices Kermit at the venue. He tells himself to play better, and to concentrate. He states that he will play for the love of the game, and avoid any provocation that will cause him to lose focus. His performance impresses the scouts, and because the qualification is less stringent than the previous one, other scouts can evaluate the player more honestly. Stanley runs into Vince's sister while at the arena. She claims to have inherited the chairmanship from his brother. She tells that since his brother took over, he has made no decent signings, and has harmed the team's success. She then asks Stanley to be the Sixers coach's assistant once again, as her father had suggested. Five months later, Stanley enters the court with the other coaches, during a game between the Sixers and the Celtics. He approaches Cruz, and greets him before the game begins. Cruz, it turns out, plays for the other side, the Celtics. Many teams wanted to sign Cruz after his selection five months ago, but he chose to sign with the Celtics. Despite the fact that Cruz was not playing for his team, Stanley is pleased to see his protege finally become an NBA great, just as he had hoped.